When the ice come in, it very becomes very, very cold. In fact, in our language, when is the winter? When will it be winter? When will winter come in? When the ice come in, winter began, not December 21. No winter now. The environment is changing more rapidly in the Arctic than anywhere else. Observing these changes is critical to forecasting conditions that will affect people in the Arctic and beyond. Just in the last decade or so, we've realized that the Arctic is really, really important. And the fact that it's changing so fast has many, many connections to other parts of the climate system that really matter to billions of people that live way beyond the Arctic. Indigenous people have carefully observed the Arctic environment for thousands of years, as their livelihoods depend on knowing where and when to find and safely harvest resources. Much of the hunter's behavior, if you look at it, is really, really risk averse. And that makes a lot of sense. If you're going to be going out hunting hundreds of times, the one in 10 chance that something might go wrong is pretty bad odds. You want to go out 100 times, you want to come back 100 times. So you don't want to take that risk that says that's ah, a 1 in 100 chance that there will be a problem. That's too much. 80 miles. It's, it's getting further and further every year. It's not uncommon to go out 100 miles out to where the ice is, to where the walrus are. So we're, in a sense, chasing the ice. That's where the walrus are. In my early days, I should be running around in that northern uh, Bering Sea ice on the ice. Now it's nothing. But with this climate change impact, it, in my opinion, it feels like you know we have a noose around there already. Now the noose is being tightened. Uh, our food security, our identity at its greatest threat. Scientific observations are more recent, but increasingly powerful with capabilities extended by satellite sensors, autonomous vehicles, and other advanced technologies. Such sustained observations have proven invaluable to helping people in the Arctic, the private sector, and governments respond to a rapidly changing environment. So some people talk about tipping points, you know, you, you talk about rapid transitions, what have you. Those are very, very difficult to predict, um, and they may not occur at all, but one thing that is common to these types of systems is that um, you start to see short-term variations or, or, or instabilities develop in several of these variables that you're tracking, and as you pick up these signals across the system, across different parts of the system, ranging from the cryosphere, different forms of snow and ice, to the atmosphere, to the ocean, to the hydrosphere, or, or, or the, the freshwater parts of the system, those are, those are important signals to track and then put into a broader context so that we, we don't have surprises waiting for us down the line. Uh, sea level rise. You know, it's uh, right now, uh, end of January, um, there's no ice. There's no way to describe it, but uh, we adapt, we live, we still hunt uh, as time goes. Um, and I hope uh, um, other people beyond the horizon will know, know what crisis we're in.